So we kind of thought we'd have a, a bit of a conversation about mindful living and, mm -hmm. and how it kind of pertains to pain management and living well mm. with pain and um, some of our kind of thoughts and experiences and uh, the difference it can make. So, um, yeah, Mark, do you want to say a bit about kind of well, what is mindful living? Yeah, I, I mean, I think best place to start there would be our volunteer, Mark. Would mm. you like to kick things off, Mark, with that? Yeah, I, I think uh, mindful living is all about noticing um, the present moment. Um, it's about not allowing your thoughts to take over, uh, especially if you've got a, a long-term health condition. It's very easy to get into this particular mindset of allowing your mind just to race ahead all the time. Very easy to start thinking about things from a very catas uh, catastrophic point of view, spending a lot of time grieving about how things used to be and worrying about how things are going to be in the future. And so I think one of the great things about mindful living is that it teaches you just to stay in the present moment and notice what's happening at that present moment. It helps to calm down your mind from thinking about all the things that are constantly churning around inside it. Mm. So it kind of has a soothing effect on the, the nervous system. Um, which I guess is so important in, in pain management, like a lot of the kind of theories around how our, our, our pain systems are kind of wired to be on alert because pain has the function of signaling danger. But with persistent pain, it's it's kind of, the wires have got a bit mixed up in a way. So we need to kind of dampen down that signal and sometimes mindful living can help a bit with that both with the thought processes associated with winding up the system and also the physiological kind of tension associated yeah, definitely. with I think, the system. Exactly. I think one of the things that sometimes can happen is the fact that you're already at that you know, threat level before you even notice that you're there and you've got all these feelings inside. You can, you know, you're experiencing the pain, etc. And it's using mindful living enables you just to bring that down a level, enabling you to recognise that the pain may still be there in many cases you experience less pain um, but you don't need to catastrophize as much as you would necessarily do if you allowed things to spiral out of control mm -hmm. and that that fits a lot in with um, an author of two books Vidi Marla Birch who wrote uh, quite extensively about mindfulness for health mm -hmm. um, and she talks about the the mindful living approach um, alongside pain can be viewing pain as um, two experiences a primary experience and a secondary experience a more response um, and a primary response to pain of course would be that uh, physical feeling of pain um, but a lot of her work concentrates on those secondary responses as well so the emotional side of pain again you mentioned catastrophic thinking those sort of thinking styles that as Becky mentioned when we are in that threat mode begin to appear more and more um, she discusses that you know mindful living can be um, a good approach in terms of noticing when those threat responses are occurring and yet to ground yourself in the present and, and to notice more that they are happening. Um, yeah, definitely. And I think as well, one of the things that Vidamala talks about is the two arrows. So mm -hmm. we have the first arrow that, you know, yes. is in a sense the, the condition that you may have, the pain you're experiencing, etc. And then the second arrow, those arrows that we tend to fire into ourselves. Oh, I'm in pain. This will never change, etc. My life is never mm -hmm. going to be how it used to be. How on earth am I going to cope with pain? This pain's unbearable, etc. And so we have a tendency then to fire those secondary arrows into ourselves. And what mindful living teaches you to do is to stop firing those secondary arrows. Mm. And what difference has that made to your experience of living with a health condition to, to kind of explore mindful living? It's made a huge difference, to be honest with you. Um, I'm a lot more accepting um, of my health condition. At one stage I would do anything to try to avoid how I felt. I felt in many senses though I was becoming that particular health condition, but that's what, that was my label, that was my identity. Mm -hmm. And with mindful living it's taught me that there is actually a hope in my life that things can be different um, and that in many senses even though I do still experience pain that pain level isn't as high as it used to be because the fact I'm not constantly firing those secondary mm -hmm. arrows. Um, and it's, it's made a massive change. I started off by, when I, before I encountered Mindful Living, I'd got to the point where I was just wanting to stay in the house all the time. I didn't want to go out. 
um, didn't want to be in pain, didn't want to have the thoughts of being in pain, etc. And so what it's taught me to do is to rather than to resist how I'm feeling, I now allow myself to accept how I'm feeling. So it's instead of this idea of, you know, we say that whatever you resist persists. And so with my health condition now, I have a much more accepting attitude towards it. Instead of treating it as an enemy, I treat it more as a friend. Mm. And I notice when I'm in pain, this, how the pain feels. I become curious about it. Does it feel hot? Does it feel cold? Does it feel tense? Does it, you know, what are those symptoms, etc.? Mm. And just accepting that that's how it is at this moment mm. in time mm. and living in this present moment rather than worrying about how things might be in 10 minutes time mm. or, you know, how things could be in two years time, etc. Mm. Mm. And the fascinating thing, I think, about that is obviously the difference it makes to how you live your life and cope mm. with the presence of something kind of unwanted and, and and challenging in your life. And also that's really backed up by all the evidence from the yeah. fMRIs, isn't it, Mark? That's right, yeah. So there is, there is a number of um, studies, research out there, which does look at functional brain scans. And the good news is, is when they looked at people who did have persistent pain, um, who had been um, doing mindful uh, living approaches and exercises, there was two areas of the brain that did show a lot of difference. Mm. Um, what we will have mentioned in other videos is that pain um, by nature is an emotional response. Yeah. And upon looking at the functional brain scans, looking at that emotional side of the brain, the area of the brain that yeah, basically processes our emotion and expresses itself in emotions, whilst pain was being experienced, that part of the brain was a little bit quieter. Mm. To use a bit of an unscientific um, description, but it was a little bit more quieter, which is good news. Mm. And secondly as well, and also there's functional brain scans as well. And the area of the brain that does process pain as well um, was slightly quieter as well compared to people who didn't um, take part and practice uh, mindful living strategies. So this is really fascinating for us who are delivering it in a community pain service because um, once mindful living was maybe seen as a bit of a, a fluffy intervention in terms of breathing, but to back it up with real science, real functions and noticing the brain changing, I think, it's great news, isn't it? It's fascinating mm -hmm. for me to, to have started in this service and not really knowing about the ins and outs of the effect it can have on pain. Yeah, but to see that has been you know, mm. quite significant in terms mm. of our work and, and delivering it to patients. I think even you know, just the breathing side of mm. mindful living can be so powerful, can't mm. it? And um, certainly kind of heard our physio talk about how he will teach people to breathe in response to moving in a more relaxed mm. and that helps with movement in a more relaxed way rather than movement in, in a in a tensed kind of threat mm. based way so even something as simple as someone kind of learning to do some deep breathing and exhaling a bit slower on the out breath we know can make such a such a difference to people's nervous system yeah definitely and i think as well as that once you start um adopting these particular techniques once you introduce mindful living into your life, it kind of permeates through the rest of your life as well. Mm. And so you find that you do slow down. Mm. Mm. A lot of things that you do, you actually notice much clearer. Mm. In many senses, I like to use an analogy of the old Wizard of Oz film, where at one stage, you know, at the beginning of the film, everything's in black and white. And I've found with mindful living that once you start adopting some of these particular techniques, like for example, you know, the breathing mm. and maybe the body scan as well, which can be very mm. powerful. Mm. It's as though the, your whole world becomes colorized, mm. a bit like that particular film. Yes, yes. And it, it makes such a difference because it does enable you just to slow down. And from a pain point of view as well, I found that it actually reduces the amount of pain that you experience. Yes. That, that secondary pain isn't there as much as it used to be when you're constantly thinking about the pain and focusing on it. And I've heard you talk in the past, Mark, about um, a practical example of where you bring that colour um, into practice and slow things down. Mm. Sort of waiting in traffic was once a, quite a, a difficult, not a difficult thing, but a frustrating thing. And now it's one of the things that you might look forward to. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> traffic lights are, are one of my favourite times, actually. <laughs> yeah. Sitting at traffic lights and just noticing what's happening. You know, for example, something as simple as just watching the clouds move across the sky, etc. Just having that comma, if you like, that mm. pause. And just 
becoming aware of uh, this present moment can be such a powerful way of living. Mm. And rather than, like I said before, you know, worrying about what could happen in the future or how things are going to be for you in the future, but just staying in that present mm. moment, mm. living moment by moment. I think that's one of the great things that the breathing teaches you. Mm. Because for a lot of people, it's kind of like, oh, right, I'm going to now learn to breathe mindfully. Well, what about the next breath and to do the last breath mm. properly? Mm. And you've missed out three or four different breaths because you're trying to focus on one thing or another mm. and the beautiful thing about mindful living is that it's not a doing thing but it's just a being thing mm. it's just noticing moment by moment by moment mm. and i like to, i love what you said there mark actually about noticing because when we're thinking about solution focused approaches in in psychology um we do quite a lot of work in in asking people um, inviting them to notice their experiences of what they'd mm. like to see more of and the analogy always comes to mind for me is if anyone's ever going to go and buy a new car, you suddenly see that new car everywhere or that, mm. that make of car everywhere. You seem to spot mm. it, you want to look out for it. Definitely. So in relation to, again, you talk a lot about this, Becky, as well, in terms of cultivating soothing responses and improving as much soothing as possible compared to threat, the invitation to notice things like your clouds in the sky and the traffic mm. jam uh, would be you know, a good, worthwhile experience to do, particularly uh, in mindful living. Well, it's kind of all about attention, isn't it? And attentional skills in a lot of ways. So pain is evolutionary designed to grab your attention, to tell you there's something wrong, do something different here. The trouble is in persistent pain. That function isn't particularly useful and actually it, it stops people kind of living their mm -hmm. lives. So mindful living kind of hones the brain to allow the pain to grab less attention in a way because you're expanding the brain's attentional capacity to notice other aspects of experience as well as the presence of pain. Yeah, definitely. And it's not as though you're just trying to distract yourself or I'm intentionally trying to mm -hmm, distract yourself. Mm -hmm. You're actually enjoying this present moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even though you may be experiencing, experiencing pain, you can still, rather than trying to resist it, you can actually draw close to it. And I think that's one of the most powerful things that I learned was the fact that rather than trying to you know push it away having an acceptance mm. towards it can be such a powerful way of mm. living mm. because you don't have all that tension that you automatically have in your body through mm. frustration or fear etc you know anxiety mm. all those things dissipate for the simple reason that you are a lot more accepting of this is how it is mm -hmm. you're not turning around and trying to be false and saying oh it's not there you know it's there but you're not denying it mm -hmm. and by not denying it and by having a more accepting attitude of it personally i found it does help to reduce that level of pain that you experience yeah and, and we can't we can't turn off our, our danger response our threat response mm -hmm. because that would involve kind of turning off your brain and mm -hmm. I don't think that would be great for people either. We've got that kind of bit in our brain, the lizard brain in mm. evolutionary terms that is designed for fight or flight, to fight the predator or get away from the predator. And that our, our brains have that part in them to, to survive. That's how we've survived as a species all these many, many years. The, the problem being in modern life is that that fight or flight can be triggered by the smallest of thing now because the, the, the brain doesn't kind of distinguish between you know the, the fear you experience from a letter coming in that might be a bill and you feel like you can't pay and there's a whole cognitive kind of stream of, of consciousness around mm -hmm. that but there's also that automatic trigger of the fight or flight response yeah and it, it can't differentiate between that and um you know a big tiger coming to get us so actually exploring ways to activate the brain and the body's kind of natural soothing systems and allowing space for that to come online mm. means it's more likely that that won't be kind of quite as triggery kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. I think for a lot of people, you know, we, we live life on default mode, you know, and being able to live in a, in a mindful way enables you to really just recognize the fact that sometimes we do things automatically. And those things are not necessarily going to be helpful for us. Mm -hmm. So when you think about, you know, thinking, for example, it's very easy, is it not, just to go straight to that worst case scenario, mm -hmm. because that, in a sense, is what our brains are programmed to do, to look for that threat, etc., that mm -hmm. constantly might or might not be there. And I think one of the beautiful things about mindful living is it teaches you that actually 
you don't need to live in that constant where is the threat etc mm. because mm. you're staying in that moment yeah. and this moment is okay yeah you're not in drive mode you're not in problem solving yeah. mode you're in just this moment i'm kind of safe mode yes and it's reassuring f for your nervous system and, and that's why the brain changes on scans pre and mm. post people learning mindful approaches mm. definitely yeah. And I think it's very closely allied to, you know, the solution focused approach that we have here um, because we do ask questions that are curious around when people are already noticing they're feeling more soothed or, you know, when was your last good day? And people then begin to describe um, perhaps moments where all of that good work's happening already. And we can go ahead and build on that and give it a bit of a name in terms of it sounds like you've been a bit mindful there. Um, would you like to know more about that? I remember talking to a chap. Um, a few years ago now, who visited Liverpool City Centre every weekend for most of his life. He really enjoyed going. But he made a sort of stance of visiting, um, almost as a visitor to that city, visitor to that city for the first time. Um, and was seeing detail on things that he'd never uh, seen before. Yeah, being yeah. a curious observer. Curious observer. You yeah. know, he was noticing detail in the light of buildings. He was noticing details in pavements. Um, and even surprised a friend in that he saw a rainbow where oil had spread across a puddle. Yeah, things that you would normally miss. So yes. Well, why why do we think that has such relevance to pain management? You know, why is that yeah, I, so I, important? I think what Mark mentioned before about um, you know turning down the autopilot. You know, mm. this idea of two paths mm. and maybe standing at the front sort of face of both of them and, and deciding which path mm. you might want to go on. Yeah. Would you agree, Mark? What yeah, would, definitely. Your thoughts? I I would totally agree with that. I mean. I do a lot of um, walking and, and walking mindfully and just noticing things. And if I am experiencing pain, you know, listening to the, the bird song that's, you know, twittering around me, etc., or listening to the sounds of the cars going past, etc., and just tuning into that. And, and it just gives you a much more rich tapestry of, of all the senses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that I've found as well is that it's, it's like your senses become heightened. Mm. It's a heightened awareness mm. because you're out, you're able just to focus on what's happening at that moment in time mm. and being able to just allow everything that you're experiencing at that particular moment mm. just to um, wash over you in a sense. Mm. And so, again, I found that's very helpful with pain because, again, for me, it's, it's, it's as though I'm focusing on what's happening at this moment. And everything just naturally seems to dial down. Mm -hmm. So I'm not having to do anything. I'm not having to think mm -hmm. about trying to, you know, change my breathing or do anything. I'm just noticing how I'm breathing mm -hmm. and noticing the things around me. Mm -hmm. And that really helps to reduce tension, and mm -hmm. stress, and obviously physical pain mm -hmm. as well. Great. Thanks.